It's been five years since I last did a video on all the Stormtrooper variants with the Loremaster. We had yet to meet even the new types that would be introduced in Rogue One that have quickly become mainstays in Star Wars, so I think now is as good a time as any for an update. So let's start with the one that started it all, the Imperial Stormtrooper. Their white armor was a symbol of fear across the galaxy. They were the most commonly seen infantry unit for the Galactic Empire throughout the Galactic Civil War. They were known as elite troops, but many jokes have been made at their expense when it comes to their aim. In the early days of the Empire, clone troopers were still used to keep order across the galaxy, but Project Warmantle was the code name for the Empire's efforts to phase out clones in place of volunteer and conscripted soldiers that were less expensive and maintaining a clone army. As the Empire continued to grow, the clone armor began to transition into what would eventually become Stormtrooper armor. This first phase of the new soldier was simply known as the TK Trooper. They were trained by Republic commandos to replace their clone predecessors. Stormtrooper variants were designed to operate in various environments or for carrying out specific roles within the Imperial military. Sand Troopers, for example, were equipped to carry out missions on desert planets like Tatooine, where they could be seen using Dubax as mounts. Space Troopers were trained to work in the vacuum of space, wearing armor that included a rebreather pack. They could be seen outside of the magnetic fields of the Death Star's hangars. Snowtrooper armor was built to be better insulated for cold weather climates, taking part in missions like the Battle of Hoth, fighting against the Rebel Alliance in their frozen base. Also seen at the Battle of Hoth were all-terrain armored transports operated by AT-AT pilots. Other kinds of Imperial walkers or vehicles had specialized pilots as well. The AT-ACT driver was distinct from the armor worn by AT-AT pilots, but was similar to the armor used by tank troopers. Tank troopers could be seen operating occupier combat assault tanks on worlds like Jeddah, but they had even further variants. The Imperial Combat Assault Transport, also known as the Juggernaut Turbo Tank, was operated by Juggernaut pilots, whose helmet resembled that of a tank trooper, but whose chest plate was closer to that of an AT. AT pilot. Scout troopers were specially trained for reconnaissance missions. They were usually skilled sharpshooters and wore lighter armor that allowed for more flexibility, which was necessary to pilot the speeder bikes they often used. Patrol troopers were somewhat similar to scout troopers. They were meant to act as a police force on Imperial occupied planets. As the Empire spread across the galaxy, they would remove local defense forces in favor of loyal patrol troopers. They also piloted smaller speeder bikes more suited for urban environments. Shore troopers were equipped for combat in tropical regions and worlds, as seen on planets like Scarif or Morak. Range troopers were considered to be some of the toughest members of the Stormtrooper Corps. They were more harshly trained to survive in less forgiving climates on the fringes of Imperial expansion. Wet weather gear stormtroopers could be seen on planets like Mimbin. They wore waterproof capes and specialized armor that helped them navigate muddy and rainy terrain. Mud Troopers, also known as Swamp Troopers, served a similar role as their wet weather brethren, but they were given oxygen masks that could filter out any harmful substances during combat. Lava Troopers wore black and red armor and were equipped with rebreathers to help them survive especially dangerous planets like Mustafar. A garrison of Lava Troopers were stationed at Fortress Vader as part of its defenses. They were supported by the similar, but less intimidating, Magma Trooper. They wore the standard white armor, but also had rebreathers. Right now, it would appear that Lava Troopers were only stationed at Fortress Vader, where Magma Troopers could be seen on other volcanic planets like Solist or Shu Torin. Sea Troopers were trained for aquatic, underwater combat. Their armor had scuba tanks, propulsion jets, and flippers on their feet. They could be seen in the Battle of Dak City on Mon Cala. Forest troopers wore camouflaged armor to help them operate in forest and jungle environments. Several forest troopers could be seen on Kashyyyk during its occupation. Cave troopers wore modified scout trooper armor that offered more protection for their legs as well as flashlights to help them see underground. Incinerator stormtroopers wore red striped armor and carried flamethrowers. Their specialization was burning out enemy fortifications. Flame Troopers were another kind of flamethrowing stormtrooper variant seen about five years after the rise of the Empire. Some Flame Troopers also had red markings on their armor, so it's possible they evolved into the incinerator style of armor over time. Artillery Stormtroopers wore yellow striped armor and were equipped with mortars to launch at enemy forces. So far, only one Artillery Stormtrooper has ever been seen on the planet Tython. Rocket Troopers wore standard Stormtrooper armor, but were always noted by the unmistakable presence of the rocket launchers they wielded. They were sometimes also referred to as Demolition Troopers, and some wore a red pauldron on their shoulder. 
Heavy assault troopers also wore the standard set of armor, but were equipped with far deadlier weapons. They often had black pauldrons and an additional ammunition pouch that set them apart. Jump troopers were equipped with jetpacks that allowed them to fly or, yes, jump great distances. Their helmets were distinct, and they often had orange armor on their shoulders emblazoned with the Imperial insignia. Riot control stormtroopers wore the standard set of stormtrooper armor, but were armed with riot batons, electrostaffs, and riot shields. Stormtrooper grenadiers wore red pauldrons and carried a black bandolier of ammunition across their chests. They were equipped with grenade launchers that fired thermal detonators. Shock troopers wore stormtrooper armor with red markings, but they were distinct from the markings of a flame trooper. They carried on the legacy of the clone troopers of the Coruscant Guard who served during the Clone Wars. Death Troopers were elite members of the Stormtrooper Corps. They wore black armor, and their bodies were augmented with classified cybernetics. They were normally seen guarding high-ranking members of the Empire or the interests of the Tarkin Initiative. Purge Troopers were also elite soldiers that were specially trained to hunt down surviving members of the Jedi Order alongside the Imperial Inquisitorius. Purge Troopers were initially made up of clones, but were eventually replaced by the most impressive Stormtroopers the Empire had to offer. One group of stormtroopers was made up entirely of specialized troopers. Special Commando Advanced Recon Troopers, or SCAR Squadron for short, was made up of six troopers led by Sergeant Creel. They were also called Task Force 99, named after the Bad Batch of the Clone Wars. SCAR Squadron shared many similarities and skill sets with Clone Force 99. The Emperor's Royal Guard isn't technically part of the Stormtrooper Corps, but its members were frequently chosen from the ranks of the most gifted stormtroopers that could be found. They wore red helmets and cloaks that concealed their armor. They were often armed with force pikes. There are still a handful more variants to cover, but I wanted to put a little break in this video because while all of these have definitely appeared in canon material, a lot of them aren't from full-on story sources, or I don't think they'll likely appear in future content, but I will explain. Purge Troopers were another kind of elite stormtrooper, not to be confused with the soldiers that accompanied the Inquisitorius. They were seen during the Iron Blockade in the Inuit Sector wearing heavy suits of armor. They appeared in the mobile game Star Wars Uprising, and I think the concept has been abandoned in favor of the Purge Trooper from Fallen Order. Crimson Stormtroopers were another red-armored elite unit trained for volcanic environments. So far, it's only appeared as an action figure released in the year 2015, so its canonicity is very iffy, but I figured I should mention it. But I doubt we'll be seeing it again since we already have the Lava and Magma Trooper. Shadow Troopers were elite, black-armored stormtroopers that have been around since the Legends days. Their armor included experimental cloaking devices. They appeared in 2015 in EA's first Battlefront game. Like the Uprising Purge Trooper, I believe Shadow Troopers have been largely abandoned in favor of the Death Trooper. And the last few I'm mentioning were all created for mobile games. Not that they can't ever appear again, some of them have, like the Stormtrooper Grenadier, which also appeared in the book Twilight Company, but I think it's unlikely for the rest of these variants. For example, Stormtrooper snipers are basically just scout troopers, but they were given a different name in the game Star Wars Commander. Stormtrooper chargers were simply equipped with stun batons. Heavy troopers were armed with electrostaffs and wore special combat armor. They were a holdover from Legends and the Force Unleashed. And finally, Storm Commandos wore silver scout trooper armor and were members of Darth Vader's personal legion. And that's it. Every current canon Stormtrooper variant from the Galactic Empire. I'm certain this video will need updating again as more and more Star Wars content comes out, but that's it for today. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.